astronomers make a big break that can give us more insight on space, and it all started here at the U of A. Start off the semester right by getting ahead in your classes at one of the three think tank tutoring centers. Did you play sports in high school and want to continue at the collegiate level? Well, some of those sports are offered here as intramurals at the U of A. All this on tonight's edition of Wildcast. This, this is, Wildcast. is Wildcast. Good evening. Welcome back to school in this year's first episode of Wildcast. I'm Lexi Suter. And I'm Marlena Hamilton. Astronomers have been beat begun building a telescope that will allow them to take the first picture of a black hole. This project has been in progress at the U of A for 10 years. Wildcast reporter Julian Yabarro gives us a first look on these astronomers who met in Tucson to talk about future plans for one of the next discoveries in space. Scientists from all around the world came to the conference bringing black holes into focus at the West End La Paloma Resort in Tucson, Arizona. U of A astronomers Dan Marone with the UA Stewart Observatory and Shep Dolman with MIT have organized the project for the past 10 years. So the Event Horizon Telescope is really a project to image the light around a black hole. It's never been done before. And there's only a few cases in the universe where we can even hope to do something like this. And the four million solar mass black hole at the center of our galaxy is one of those. We call it Sagittarius A star. And the idea is to make an Earth-sized virtual telescope. And we do that by taking radio telescopes around the world, looking at this source in the center of our galaxy, and then taking all the data back to a central facility where we, in a computer, make a lens, if you will, to, to synthesize a telescope as big as the Earth. The project is led out of the MIT Haystack Observatory uh, in Massachusetts. The uh, University of Arizona has been involved for about 10 years, um, particularly because we have uh, a wonderful telescope up on Mount Graham. And uh, so this telescope has been an important part of the array for, for as long as this experiment has been going on. We're going to be using telescopes in the United States, in Mexico, in Chile, uh, in Antarctica, uh, in France, in Spain, um, in Greenland probably. Uh, and so it's really an international effort. And the people who work on each of these individual telescopes are here to organize ourselves and to get our thoughts in order and figure out what we will see when we do this so that we can complete this project in the next couple of years. It's taken a decade to get to this point, and we're almost there. This is Julian Yabarra reporting at La Paloma for Wildcast. The astronomers plan to put telescopes in different countries around the world. One of the UA scientists working on the project predicts that the first picture of the black hole will be shown in 2015. It's really interesting. I mean, that'll put U of A on the map for a lot of, you know, science, the whole science industry. It definitely will. And the first picture of a black hole. I know. Very Sounds cool. good. I'm excited. The Think Tank has expanded this year so they can be even more available to students needing a little helping hand. The three tutoring centers on campus offer free help to UA students. Wildcast reporter Jackie Kent goes on campus to see what the Think Tank is all about. It's a new semester and it's time to get back into study mode. Luckily, University of Arizona students have a helpful resource, the Think Tank. The Think Tank has three locations, the Nugent Building in the center of campus, the second floor of the Park Student Union, and in the Rec Center, in case you want to break a mental sweat too while you're at the gym. Go to either location for drop-in tutoring, exam preparation, or just for a weekly course review. The Think Tank is open 100 hours per week. You can walk in for free Sunday through Friday, or you can check out the fee-based tutoring as well if you need a little extra help. It's been very much helpful. Like if you are having a lot of trouble with all of your studies, or it's very helpful. I like it a lot because when I don't understand like some people around, I just come here to like all understand more, so I think it's really helpful. The Think Tank offers tutoring in math, writing, science, and Spanish. Last fall, the Think Tank expanded its hours. Visit the website for more information about drop-in tutoring times or to make an appointment for a personal tutor. We truly want to help students. We've all been through school, we've all been through this process. We know how things work and we know some of how, what students go through. As the semester progresses, all locations get pretty packed. According to statistics from the fall 2011 semester, the Nugent Building expects 200 visits per day, or 1,200 visits per week. 
while the PSU and rec center locations have around 50 visits per day and between 250 and 300 visits per week. Now is probably the best time to come to the think tank because um, there's hardly about anyone here so you'll get to you can get a tutor quickly um, as opposed to waiting to the end of the semester when everyone else is here. So if you need help, come now. Now's the best time to come in. Reporting from the University of Arizona campus for Wildcast, I'm Jacqueline Kent. For the Think Tank's hours and more information, check out www.thinktank.arizona.edu. The Think Tank is so helpful. I went all the time my freshman and sophomore year, and I, I think I should go again and take my resume or something. No, it's no? a great idea because they don't just help you with math and science. They offer a lot of help and you know wherever you need it. So a lot of good. different things. Yeah. yeah, it's nice. When we return, we will give you a preview to upcoming intramural sports. We'll be right back. I'm Derek Williams, the former U of A Wildcat. You're watching UA TV. Don't change the channel. UATV 3EEEEEEE UATV 3EEEEEE When I turn on the TV, I turn it to channel 3 Cause they got all the greatest shows that I've been waiting to see It's entertaining to me, cause it's pertaining to me And all the other wildcats in the student body We're broadcasting live to all the residence halls So all y'all's in the halls, turn your TVs on to channel 3 for she -Z, So you can see me and all the other happy people down at UATV 3 Thanks for staying with us, Wildcats. Intramural sports are back. The third season starts next week and is offering a new sport, doubles tennis. Wildcats reporter Caroline Scott tells us more on the exciting new season of intramural sports. The Campus Recreation Center is registering now for spring intramural sports. Storm Riddle, a grad assistant for intramural programming, gives the closing date of registration. Currently we're in Season C registration and it ends actually Wednesday, January 25th at 5 p.m. This season they offer basketball, ultimate frisbee, wiffle ball, doubles tennis, and co-rec softball. The games are all held on or near campus and Storm Riddle tells when the games will start and end. Games begin actually that, that coming Sunday, which is January 29th. Games, though, normal season games are going to run through February 18th, and then it's going to pull over into playoffs. And they usually play a single elimination tournament throughout the next two weeks. So final play for this season will be done March 1st. Winners of the intramural seasons receive champion t-shirts and lasting bragging rights. All of the sports are offered in different levels of play based on how competitive a team wants to be. If you're interested in signing up for intramural sports, come to the registration office at the rec center, Monday through Friday, 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. Reporting for Wildcast at the Student Rec Center, I am Carol Ann Scott. If any of these sports are of an interest to you, hurry and sign up because registration ends tomorrow. Sounds good. It's a good opportunity to stay in shape when you get to school. It definitely does. And now they have doubles tennis. So if you did that in high school, let's offer it again. Go for it. <laughs> <laughs> when we come back, we will introduce you to a new indie rock band that took over Tucson last weekend. On to our last story for the night. 
Hyper Crush is a new band based out of LA that visited Tucson for a show this year. They mix some indie and rock music to create their own unique sound. Wildcast reporter Charles Mizra takes us behind the scenes of the Hyper Crush concert. <laughs> Hyper Crush is a group that brings you a steady dose of electronica and hip hop to always keep the club rocking. The Los Angeles band consists of rapper Donnie Fontaine, vocalist Holly Valentine, and guitarist Preston Maroney. They shared some of their input on their new record called Nightwave. But we have songs like She's a Freak and like, you know, it's kind of like our beginning stuff a little bit. I mean, it's all obviously like a lot harder and more aggressive, but... Yeah, work is kind of like a new Robotech, yeah, like, like a sexier Robotech, yeah, you know? Like... They listed quite a few of their inspirations. They even had a few ideas for people that they could work with in the future. John Denver? Yo, yo, ma. John Denver, yo, yo, ma. John Denver. You know what I mean? Yeah. No, with him, no, we, 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 you get the Ouija board. Yeah. You get the Ouija board for John Denver. As well as an inspiration for one of their new singles, Fingers Up. I, well, big inspiration for me, actually, was leaving uh, Universal Motown. Yeah. yeah. So that inspired a lot of us, Fingers Up. Yeah, you know. Fingers Up was, that was that. Yeah. Hyper Crush gets the crowd to rally with its high energy performances. They find the energy to deliver every night somehow. For me it's like even if like there's been times where I've had like the worst headache or like I'm like super tired but honestly right when you get on stage and you're like in front of the fans it's like it doesn't even matter you, you could be like sore from or like working out you're sore but like you perform and you're in front of the audience and it's like this adrenaline just it's true though it's like crazy. You get on stage and at least if, if, if there's at least like three people just getting hyped that'll fuel a, a musician's ego for years you know band has a strong vision for their product as they work hard to keep pumping out the music that they love. Just being able to do what we love, like you said, just making music we love to make and performing it for people we love to perform it for. Yeah. She says yeah, so I'm going to say yeah. Hyper Crush is releasing Nightwave on February 7th. You can pre-order a digital copy for yourself on iTunes or email hypercrushstreetteam at gmail.com for a hard copy. Reporting for Wildcast, I'm Charles Miller. What up, Tucson? Oh, yes. How you feeling? Hyper Crush is releasing their new album on February 7th. You can pre-order a digital copy on iTunes for only $8. They have a good sound. They do. I think a lot, of, a lot of people liked them when they came. A lot of bands and a lot of DJs have come in the past and keep coming, so we'll definitely keep you up to date, UATV, with yep. new concerts and stuff like that. That is all we have for you tonight. You can watch us anytime online at uatv.arizona.edu. We will see you next week. I'm Marlena Hamilton. And I'm Lexi Suter. We'll see you next week for another edition of Wildcast.